they're telling me I am on and that you can hear me in your homes today. Welcome this morning, Battle Creek First Church of the Nazarene. If we have someone that is uh, seeing this for the first time, uh, we are happy to have you. Uh, today, we recognize the day of Pentecost, or the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And those that were in the upper room on that day, as described in the book of Acts chapter 2. Pentecost Sunday is always, just so you know, the seventh Sunday after Easter. The sanctuary color for uh, Pentecost is red. And so if you look at our altar, uh, now I'm kind of loud, but <laughs> uh, did you miss, uh, was I not on? Oh, okay, okay, good. This symbolizes uh, the fire of the Holy Spirit, the red. And today we celebrate the Holy Spirit in us. Amen? Amen. Yes, we celebrate the hope that we now have. That we can do greater things because of the Holy Spirit in us. So we are happy to celebrate the day of Pentecost on this Sunday. Also, you should have received your uh, Pentecost bags, I guess. I'm not sure of a better name for it. But in that, uh, I, I think, was it Jill that made these uh, these bookmarks? I am so impressed by these. And I, and I know that there should have been one or two or whatever in, in the bag for you. So make sure you look for that. And uh, it, it's beautiful. It's got, it talks about the Holy Spirit. And so uh, that was really nice to have. Well, birthdays. Uh, Ricardo, I'm not sure about his last name, but that's Teresa's uh, son, Ricardo. And uh, his birthday will be on June 1st. And uh, little uh, Lucy, Lucia, uh, hers is on the 2nd of June. We miss uh, the Wolford family. And uh, I think of her in the... She was the cutest of the, of the family. <laughs> uh, but uh, anyway, we wanted to say happy birthday to, to both Ricardo and Lucia. Also, anniversaries, Paul and Martha B. You know who they are. Uh, Paul and Martha are celebrating uh, this coming week uh, their anniversary. And I know that's going to be really exciting and, and a, uh, a great uh, time for them. With that, come on up, brother. Brother Paul is going to come up and uh, give us an announcement. I'm just going to tear things up a little bit. Don't let me get on this platform. I make a mess. Good morning. I am so glad that you told me we have an anniversary this week. I missed that. No, I'm just kidding. 26 years, believe it or not. So now you know which Paul they're talking about. Woo! Um, I wanted to give you an update. On, first off, with the um, regathering, the reopening, we met on Wednesday of last week. We are in the process of developing a plan to come back together. Um, most of you should have received a survey yesterday. Please return those to us because we want to know where our people are at with a comfort level, with um, sanitation and social distancing and masks and everything else. We want to know where your comfort level is at because we want to be accommodating to as many people as we can. So get those in. Um, we're working toward having that together so that we can set a date to have everybody meeting back in the, in the sanctuary, okay? So be sure to send those in. In addition to that, this Friday, we will have an in-person interview, the church board will, with a candidate. It, this is very exciting. We had an online interview with him um, a couple weeks ago, and um, the candidate and their spouse will be flying in. We will be showing them the town and showing them the facilities and then having an interview with them to see where we move from here. So be praying for the board, be praying for them. Also be praying for our DS who, because he's older, he's not comfortable with actually being here in person yet, but he will be 
and we're setting up something online so that he can be watching the whole proceeding. So be praying for me, because he's put me in charge of this whole thing, and he trusts me. I'm not sure why. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but uh, so be praying for us as we move through this process to to get us a new lead pastor. Thank you. Thank you, Paul, for that. Thank you. That's uh, very important for us to know and, and stay up on. Also, just a, a few other announcements that I normally say uh, each Sunday. I want you to stay connected. Remember, Facebook, phone, text, email, uh, or you could even use uh, the U.S. Post Office as well. Uh, call the church phone. Leave messages. Let us know what's going on. Let us know if you have a question. Uh, we will uh, get back to you uh, on that same day. If not, it will be the, definitely the next day. Giving, continue to be faithful in your giving. We are so thankful for you for that. Uh, give online. Give by mail. You can drop it off here at uh, the church during the week. If you just uh, ring the, the doorbell for the child care, and someone would be able uh, to accept that from you. But also, we can do a curbside pickup, as we call it. And uh, if you need someone to come by, we can come by and pick up your tithe and offering. Well, uh, next Sunday is Trinity Sunday. You, want to, you don't want to miss that time of celebrating uh, the Trinity. And we will look at uh, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. And, and, uh, and also, I think it would be appropriate for us next uh, Sunday, be prepared for this. We, we, will, uh, we will share the Apostles' Creed together. And it will be on the screen for you to, to see and be able to say that along with us. Well, uh, Paul writes in 1 Corinthians, his letter to the church at Corinth, he writes this, There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit is the source of them all. Different gifts, but the Spirit is the same. There are different kinds of service, but we serve the same Lord. And he says uh, in verse 6, God works in different ways, but it is the same God who does the work in all of us. A spiritual gift is given to each of us so that we can help each other. Have you ever looked at spiritual gifts that way? That they're given to help one another. That's what Paul tells us. To encourage, to comfort, to strength each other. Yes, we can do even greater things, Jesus said, with the Holy Spirit in us. Let us now sing praises to this one God who is the same in all of us.
feel his presence? Do you feel the heaviness of his presence today? I know as we come to this time of family prayer, we want to pray for our family. We want to pray that the Holy Spirit would come. That the Holy Spirit would feel welcome. We want to pray knowing that we need to be overcome by His presence. I know that uh, I want you to continue to pray uh, for Jerry and uh, her dad, George. You know who they are. You know the need there. And uh, also continue to pray for my cousin, Alan. He is... Uh, been trying to deal with the pain of all that surgery. And so just continue to lift him up as well. Uh, continue to pray for the families in Midland, the Midland area with the flooding that took place there. That's damage that will, it will take months, months and months to even begin to recover from that. Pray for our nation today. Pray for our nation for love, peace, hope, faith, and wisdom. We need it. We need a lot of prayer. And pray for our, as Paul mentioned, pray for the board. Pray for our pastoral search uh, process. And, and it's more than a process. It, it is uh, it is a kind of a, we also search ourselves as a church when we look for a new pastor. We look for a, a shepherd. We have to search ourselves. And we ask the Holy Spirit to search us and help us. And so let's pray for our board. I want this week, I would ask each and every one of you, this week, 10 minutes each day, starting today, find 10 minutes today, every day and through Thursday. 10 minutes a day is all I'm really asking. You can pray more, but at least 10 minutes. Pray for our board, our church board. Pray for each and every member on that board. Most of you, you know who they are. Some may not, but just pray for our board. Pray for wisdom. Pray for God's presence. Pray for God's search of each and every one of their hearts. And that the Holy Spirit would feel welcomed in their lives, their hearts, as they work through this process of finding a shepherd. We need to let all of heaven know how serious we are about this search especially at this time, in this moment. And then on Friday at, six, or at 7, 7 p.m. on Friday, I want all of us to be in prayer. Every one of us. In prayer. So if you're listening, I would ask you to, to be in prayer at 7 p.m. for 10 minutes on Friday. For our board. As, as they are meeting with a candidate, we, we, we'd, say, we'd say a candidate, but a, a potential shepherd, right? For that 10 minutes, I, I want you to pray. I want you to pray that, that for God to be mightily evident in that moment, in that time, that God would be leading in such a way that there'd be no doubt that the Holy Spirit has unified the board in such a way that God would be present. Sunday through Thursday, 10 minutes a day. You pick the time. On Friday at 7 p.m. 7 p.m. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, if we would be so bold today, Lord, 
to even begin to think that we can put a human characteristic in you. And I think we can because you said we were made in your image. Lord, we are believing that you're shedding a tear, and maybe many, for our nation, our country. And so, Lord, we're asking today that you would help us to shed a tear for our nation, to know that it needs you. It needs your presence, O oh Holy Spirit. It needs your love poured out all over it, all throughout our country. Lord, we would ask for that today. We, we, would, we know it's not too much for us to cry for our country. Help us, Lord, as we reflect on that today. And Lord, would you be with each and every person I've mentioned here in this moment, this time of family prayer? Would you be with each and every individual that's listening and watching today? And Lord, you know the needs. And Lord, if there might be someone that needs to know you as their Lord and Savior, oh Lord, would you, oh Holy Spirit, would you just continue to knock on that door, knock on that heart, knock on that mind. Lord, thank you for our call to ministry. Thank you for this time that we can gather together spiritually, Lord, and worship you. We'd be careful, Jesus, to give you all the praise, glory, and honor for this day, for this moment. Amen. You know, I didn't mention it, but our our kids from the Child Care Learning Center, they graduated. Uh, let's see now, that was Friday, wasn't it? I think Friday they had the graduation ceremony. And it was, I mean, I saw all the festivities of it and all the decorations, it was beautiful. And those kids I saw in their graduation, you know, their, their gown and, and, and their cap and all that stuff. And uh, I know it was an exciting time. So it was a good time. I want, you know, we need to keep praying for our learning center because we are, we are trying to reach out, especially at this time, uh, to our families. And it, it's been a challenge. But I know that uh, Cindy and the whole team and, and staff there have done a very, uh, a really good job of trying to do that. So let's keep praying for them. Well, today, as we look at the message, you know, we're talking about the Holy Spirit. And I think it makes sense that I talk to you about the Holy Spirit today. Did you know that, uh, that you can live about three to five weeks without food? I mean, we can. It's been proven. Uh, three to five weeks, maybe longer. I think there's people that have lived longer than that without anything to eat. You can live approximately three to five minutes without air. That's quite a bit more drastic. And you can live roughly three to five days without water. 65% hmm. of our body is water. How about that? It is water that carries oxygen to our cells. We think blood, but that's, it's the water in our blood. How about that? <laughs> water cushions all of our joints, some more than others. <laughs> Tell your knees that, right? Oh. Yes. You cannot digest food without water. Ask a horse. <laughs> You've ever raised horses? Water makes up 70% of our planet. Water is important. You know, water has a unique 
a, a couple of different unique molecular uh, properties, I would say. Did you know that the solid form of water, which is ice, can float in the liquid form of water? That's very unique. Does that excite you? <laughs> You've never thought about that when you put that ice in that water. You're putting water in water. <laughs> And that water has a high heat capacity. Water, meaning it takes more energy to, to uh, increase the temperature of water compared to other substances. That's why we put it in our radiator. And water has a high surface tension, I, I found. Have you ever noticed water when it beads up on your car? If you, if you watch water, even on a flat surface, if you watch the beads, they will connect. They're like they're moving. You ever notice that? They are moving. Water has a high surface tension. It resists being pulled apart. It wants to be together. That's how water is. No, I'm not giving you a science lesson today. That's not what this is about. If I did, you all passed. But if I were, I mean, it's kind of interesting learning about water. But that's not what I want to talk to you about. I, I want to instead, in our time together, our short time, Jesus offers us a different kind of water. A water for anyone and everyone who is thirsty. You got to be thirsty, though. He offers it to those who are thirsty. And those who will believe in Him, He offers us a water. It is not a physical water. It is a water that gives life, but it's not physical. It is a living water. But the question is, are you thirsty? Hmm. Well, today we will explore our thirst for this water Jesus is talking about. And our main text is going to be John chapter 7. And we'll be looking at just a couple, three verses in there. And you can go ahead and turn there. John chapter 7, if you have your Bible. And uh, we'll be looking at, on the screen here, a little bit uh, the New Living Translation as, as I typically do. But uh, it's important to understand that Jesus has already been speaking to others about this different kind of water. So in our passage, he's already been talking about it before. And earlier in his ministry, Jesus offered a Samaritan woman what he called living water. Remember the, the woman at the well? Yeah, he offered her a living water. When he told her, if you only knew the gift God has for you and who you are speaking to, you would ask me and I would give you living water. That's the gift that God has for us, is living water. And Jesus goes on to tell her something about this water, which I am certain created in her a thirst, a desire for this water, just from him telling her about it. He told her that, that those who drink this would always have their fill. When they drink it, they, they fill up every time. And he told her, he said, it becomes a fresh, bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. Wow, do you want some of this water? Church, it is this living water which becomes a fresh, bubbling spring from within us that I want to talk about for a few minutes. Come with me now to Jerusalem. We'll talk about this water. Come, I want to take you to Jerusalem on, the, on a special day of the year. It's October in Jerusalem. And there's a celebration going on. A lot of people are there. It seems like in Jerusalem, on those days of celebration, there's a lot of people come from all around. And, and like many Jews, Jesus is there on this day. And I want you to come with me there. The, the celebration of the festival that they are, that, that's going on is called the Feast of the Tabernacles. 
Sometimes it's called the Feast of the Booths. Uh, but really a booth is a tent. That's not what we called them in the army. Did they call them that in the Navy? They called them tents, right? <laughs> you didn't have too many tents. Uh, you have ships. <laughs> um, but it's the Feast of the Tabernacles. Well, that's what we'll call it today. Uh, you know, it, it, uh, when they celebrate the Feast of the Tabernacles, there's two things. There's two main points to it. There's two reasons to celebrate, for sure, at least. One of them is that the, their ancestors, the Israelites, their ancestors, they're celebrating the fact that they were wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. And they lived in tents, tabernacles, booths. Even, the, even God had a tabernacle, right? They, drug, you know, they dragged that thing around. And so they're celebrating that they did that for 40 years. And in that 40 years, God provided. And secondly, they are celebrating that when they finally came to the promised land, God provided there too. He provided water. He, he provided a, a beautiful land. And they could have a great harvest. So this tabernacle, this feast of the tabernacles is celebrating that. Their time in the wilderness where God provided and their time in the promised land God provided. Part of that celebration, this is interesting, part of the celebration, there would be this procession every day. The priest would go down to the pool of Shalom. He would take this golden flask and he would dip it in that water. And then he would go back up to the temple, to the altar, and he'd grab the golden flask of wine. And he'd take both of these and he would pour them into this bowl that had holes in the bottom and it would kind of dribble onto the, sink, uh, to, to the altar. The wine and the water would mix and dribble onto the altar. It was like a sacrifice. They gave their wine and they gave their water. They would do this every day for, for the seven days of the celebration. Every day that procession would take place. And what that would represent is God's provision of water. Not only in the wilderness, right? When they needed water, but also when they needed to harvest a crop. The grapes would be the harvest in this case. So they would be using this water. They would be putting it over, sprinkling it, and it would go onto the altar. And it was during this last day that Jesus is there now. Remember, he's there. He's watching like everybody else. He's seeing the priest go down and get the water and come back up and goes inside. And he knows what he's doing in there. And Jesus is watching everybody who's watching this. They're all celebrating this water. Jesus steps up <laughs> and he says this, beginning in verse 37 of John chapter 7. This is what Jesus says. And, and, and there's some, some narration here. On the last day, it says in verse 37, on the last day, the climax of the festival, Jesus stood. Now they've just done this thing with the water. Jesus stood and shouted to the crowds, Anyone who is thirsty may come to me. Anyone who believes in me may come and drink. For the scriptures declare rivers of living water will flow from his heart. Verse 39. When he said living water, he was speaking of the Spirit, who would be given to everyone believing in him, but the Spirit had not yet been given because Jesus had not yet entered into his glory. So this living water is the, the, the same living water that he had offered the woman. That's what this is. It is the Holy Spirit. That's the water. He, they're all celebrating water. And Jesus is watching. And he lets them know what the celebration is really about. 
It's a, I think, I guess you could call it a spiritual drink, right? That's what you could call it. In fact, Paul, in his letter to Corinth, he calls it a spiritual drink, the Holy Spirit. You see, just at the moment in the celebration where the Jews were, were recognizing God's provision of this water, both in the wilderness and in the promised land, Jesus gives them something to think about. Hey, I, I've got some water for you. That something to think about is the something he offered the woman at the well. It, it, Jesus chooses to offer a living water for anyone who is thirsty for it. And here we are, 2,000 years later, and his offer has not changed. He's still stepping up and shouting out to all of us. Hey, are you thirsty? <laughs> I've got some water for you. A living water. In Jesus's, you know, in Jesus's words to that crowd on that day, we too find hope, don't we? We find hope and power that we need to be the church. We need this. We need the Holy Spirit to be the church, to do what God has called us to do, to help a nation that is hurting. To be the person God has called us to be. We need this water. And Jesus is asking you and I the same question he asked them. Are you thirsty? Are you thirsty? I mean, we see in verse 37, Jesus stood up, he stood, and he shouted to the crowds. Folks, it is Jesus who stood up. Not anybody else. Jesus stood up in front of all those people who were celebrating a, a time that they thought they knew exactly what they were celebrating, but he stood up. No one else did. Only Jesus can give this water. No one else could do that. God sent his son to do that. To offer this water. A spiritual drink. Much later on, on the, the night that he was rested. I mean this would be later on. And we, saw, we see in John chapter 15. Jesus. you know, he's, uh, We see that he says this. He says but I will send you. He's talking to his disciples. I will send you the advocate. The spirit of truth. He will come to you from the Father and I and will testify about me. That's what Jesus said. By this time in his ministry to his disciples, Jesus has provided multiple names for this water that he's been talking about. He, he called it the advocate, the spirit of truth. And Jesus begins to explain the workings of this living water. You know, the commentary writer in the Wesleyan Bible commentary puts it this way, the Holy Spirit does not stand as a power independent of Jesus, nor is he uh, to, to be a focus of faith distinct from Jesus. You don't just worship the Holy Spirit, amen? Jesus is the one who can offer the Holy Spirit. He only comes from Jesus. Jesus, and he only speaks about Jesus. Jesus says, he will testify all about me. He will only speak about me. That's what Jesus says. And notice that the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. He speaks about Jesus to you and me even now. As we're sitting here and as I'm standing here, he's speaking through the Holy Spirit. This living water, this gift of God, and, and spirit of truth offered to both the woman at the well and all those people that day in Jerusalem is offered to us today, right now. To all, everyone, no matter where you're at. If you're at home, you're here, in your car. Church, those people were being offered the Holy Spirit as a promise then. He was still just a promise on that day. That Jesus stood up and said that. He, he was only offering a promise. And yet today, the Holy Spirit's here now. 
That's why we celebrate Pentecost. He's come. Woo! He has come. He is here. Are you thirsty this morning? If you are, notice the first announcement Jesus makes when he stood up in front of all those people. He said this, anyone who is thirsty may come to me. You got to be thirsty to come to me. This offer is open to anyone. As the disciples will find out later, Jesus has been given all the authority of heaven and earth to make this offer to anyone. He says that to him when he, in his commission, when, he, when he's leaving. But what does Jesus mean by being thirsty? I mean, what does he really mean by being thirsty? Why is he asking if you're thirsty? Perhaps it, you know, thirst, maybe you're thirsty this morning if you have a need that hasn't been met. Are you thirsty? Maybe you're thirsty because you need to be forgiven. Maybe. Maybe you're thirsty because you need to forgive. Maybe. It could be that uh, you don't feel loved. There may be someone who's not feeling love right now. Or maybe it's someone who is in love with the wrong things. Maybe they're thirsty. Maybe that's what Jesus is saying. Perhaps it is someone listening right now and realizing that you need to know more about this Jesus. You're thirsty. <laughs> and maybe it's someone who knows Jesus, but you've stopped talking to Jesus. Maybe you're thirsty. Maybe you're not praying. Folks, no matter what it is, Jesus says in verse 38, anyone who believes in me may come and drink. Whew. Jesus is asking if you're thirsty. And if you come, he says, believe in me. Trust me. Uh, give me that that you are struggling with and I will give you a drink of that water that never stops flowing. Oh, I'll give you that drink. Mm. It comes from Him. It doesn't come from us. It comes from Him. He gives it to us and He works through us for others to drink. Are you thirsty this morning? Again, looking at verse 38 of our text, Jesus gives us a kind of a word picture of what it is like to have a drink of this living water that we thirst for. Jesus says, for the scriptures declare rivers of living water will flow from his heart, our heart. Anyone who believes, that's what he said earlier, Anyone who believes, for the scriptures declare rivers of living water will flow from his heart, their heart. We can't be sure about what scripture he, Jesus was referring to because all the scholars debated, but I'm convinced that Jesus is describing the working of the Holy Spirit in me, in you. That's what that river of living water is. It's the Holy Spirit working inside of us. The commentary writer again says this, what begins as a quest for a drink becomes the discovery of a river. In other words, what started as a drink to quench a thirst in us, a need, becomes the discovery of a river flowing from our hearts as we you know, I mean, for me, this tells me that as we grow in the Spirit, this spiritual water will be evident to others. They'll see it. They see it in me. They see it in you. He certainly wants us, you and me, to let that river flow. Amen.
That's what he's saying. Let that river of the Holy Spirit flow. Let him work in your life so that others, what did I say earlier? I think in the scripture reading, something about that it will to help one another. Hmm. The Holy Spirit flowing from us. Well, I invite the praise team to come up, and I, but and they're going to help us respond to this. But but I want to I want to kind of share something with you right quick. I, I know that for me, Jesus's words and actions in this passage also call for me to remember what it is like to be thirsty for Christ. Oh Lord, I want to be thirsty today. I need to be thirsty. And in closing, I want to share you a, an illustration about thirstiness. What it might do in us. Do you know how many bees it takes to make a jar of honey? Someone in here might know. Someone out there watching may know how many bees it takes. Well, according to the National Honey Board, the life of one honeybee worker is astounding. For one collection trip, it beats its wings 11,400 times per minute. Traveling over a mile at 15 miles an hour to gather pollen and nectar from 50 to 100 flowers. It makes such a collection trips throughout its entire life, which is only 28 to 35 days long. That's it, that's all a bee gets in its life. Producing a total of 1 12th of a teaspoon of honey in its entire life. One bee, no more than about a month. It only gets that one time. That's all it gets to make is 1 12th of a teaspoon. So you can do some math and figure that out. In order for the average American to consume one and a third pound of honey each year, a colony of bees will fly over 72,000 miles and visit 2.6 million flowers for you to have that honey. And I love honey. And I have at least that much at home. You see, each and every one of those bees have a tremendous thirst for pollen and nectar. And I think we need to have a tremendous thirst today to share God's grace. That's the thirst we need. To share God's grace in a lost and dying world. But again, we must start with a thirst for the truth that only comes from the indwelling and the infilling of the Holy Spirit in our lives. I want to ask you again, are you thirsty this morning.
in this world that is always changing, with, with rules always changing, people always changing, our lives always changing, from the beginning of the baby to the end. Lord, we live in a life with constant change. But Lord, the one thing that never changes is you. You are our firm foundation, our hope on this earth. And Lord, we thank you so much for the message that you have given us this morning through Pastor Ray. Lord, the thirst for you. Help us to be thirsty for you, to dive into your word, to dive into prayer, to pray this week for our board, for our nation. Lord, for the, the passions and cries that you have put in our hearts for injustice, for peace, for hope, for healing. Lord, we thank you for who you are. Help us to be your hands and your feet to others. Help us to go to others, whether that's through an email, through a card, through physically seeing each other outside or a phone call. Lord, help us to be creative in this time to show your love to others, to be your hands and feet. We pray this this morning in your name. Amen. And that is all for our service this morning. Thank you for joining us online. We're going to play a song for fun. You can stick around on Facebook if you'd like to or do in the comments. But this is a, a new song. We're not quite polished on it yet. But it's called Good Grace. And uh, I feel like the words of it are just really, really helpful for what we need today. And I, I know it blessed us this morning as we were practicing it. So if you'd like to stay out online, we hope it blesses you too. Oh, come together, straight. 